Uh, now I invite Dr. Mohammad Razmi. Uh, he has done his MD from PGI, and uh, right now he is clinical head and consultant dermatologist at IQRA Aesthetics, Calicut, and also dermatologist at Ziva Skin and Hair Clinic, Kanur. And his very various publications, presentations, and awards in his name. And his area of interest are vitiligo surgery, hair transplantation. Medical Dermatology and Clinical Research. Uh, Dr. Mohammed Rajmi, you may start now. Good evening to all. This is a wonderful session of Vitligo that is happening for three days. And as you know, that different people and different countries, there will be different views also. We have just moved from a deep pigmentation from a deep pigmentation session. So we are rejuvenating people, cosmetology and rejuvenation. So we would like to Repigment rather than depigment in a later note. So, as you know, vitiligo is an autoimmune skin disease that due to the CD8 plus T cell destruction of melanocytes that lead to depigmented areas. And uh, a subset of memory T cells, known as resident memory T cells, persist in the lesion. That may be the reason of uh, relapse of uh, patches in the same area and also disease persistence may be happening in the acral vitiligo. And uh, there are ongoing studies that target uh, uh, resident memory T cells in halting vitiligo disease that are targeting IL-15 by CD122 uh, anti, uh, antibodies. And uh, similar, that uh, memory T cell depletion can be obtained with uh, long-term uh, immunosuppressive also. And clinical studies utilizing clinical immunosuppressive are limited by short steady duration. Usually we do in thesis for four months or six months, so it's not a time to give that much favorable microenvironment in the lesional skin. So real-world real world clinical practice involves a long-term follow-up of patients. We give uh, a long-term of immunosuppressives, and uh, we, in some patients we see repigmentation even in the acral area. So you know it's a CD8 plus T cells that were necessary and sufficient to mediate human with LIGO that destroy the melanocyte. Even the T cell from the lesional skin, when you coin, uh, have it with the uh, melanocyte from the other, bo other body side, it will destroy the cells. And uh, regarding the memory T cells, there are three types of memory T cells, central memory T cells trafficking between the blood and secondary lymph organs, and effective memory T cells that will come to the lesional skin and uh, that lead to the uh, activity that's uh, destruction. And there is some resident memory T cell that persists. There are non-migratory tissue resident T cells that persist in the peripheral tissue without any replenishment of T cell from circulation. So these are mainly hypotheses and maybe contradictory views. And activity was autoimmune etiology. And the resident memory T cells are in constant activation due to the melanocyte being a self-antigen. So it will give that is, uh, inflammatory a milieu in the acryl area. And these resident memory T cells could accumulate into skin after repetitive flare-up of the disease. And therefore, it could be important to start the treatment as early as possible during the first initiation of the disease or during a recent flare-up in patient with active disease. Here a patient, even in the non-acryl vitiligo patient also, if you don't give that much immunosuppression and you keep on uh, treating with topical treatment, as in this patient has only facial vitiligo. You know any new molecule comes to, that is any, uh, that tofacitinib or afamalinotate, the study paper is only on facial vitiligo because it is the prototypical repigmented vitiligo, so we can question the, that proof of concept of that study, whether it will repigment or not. That's the face area. So in the, even in the face area, if you don't uh, at that target the that uh, central or effective memory T cells by global immunosuppression, even with topical uh, steroids or topical tacrolimus won't work. But after starting immunosuppressive, that is prednisolone tapering dose from 30 milligram to 5 milligram by one to two months, and later that uh, immunosuppression uh, that may persisted uh, that maintained with azathioprine, the patient had almost 90% uh, repigmentation by six months. So in this acral vitiligo, there may be that uh, persistent uh, immune uh, immunity activation happening, and we are not targeting the 12 longer duration. 
and sometimes you may need to add UV light therapies or melanocyte activating factors with oral uh, that PUA sold, like kind of thing. So I am giving some examples. It's not all uh, that's uh, all or none or uh, not. It's, it's maybe some patients, but I am just giving some insights or some questions, research questions by this presentation. Here, a 20-year-old male actual vitiligo patient of eight years duration and actively spreading and uh, oral steroids were given for two months followed by azathioprine and oral PUVA, that methoxylene 25 milligram every other day for one year. Here at almost 90% repigmentation attained by eight months. You can see even periangal vitiligo also repigmented that even with a surgical, with a surgical treatment it won't repigment but even without any intervention by giving topical steroid for initial three months and topical tacrolimus to be, that's continued without any uh, basic fiber growth factors, other kind of thing. Only tacrolimus topical with only immunosuppressions and oral PUA. You can see the periangual area that got repigmented nicely with uh, this treatment. Even the palms also that is getting repigmented. And the same similar thing is uh, you can see in the, uh, the legs also. You can f find that it's actively spreading, uh, that uh, the border is not defined in the first place. And those patches became very much defined in the second picture. But when you look into the periangle area, it is completely repigmented almost. So another patient of official vitiligo of 10 years duration, oral steroids, and that patient developed central serous retinopathy by steroids, so you should be careful that some, uh, this kind of uh, rare complication also. Then put him on methotrexate, the result was not that much good, and they followed by azathioprine, it was responded. And or also started oral methoxylin because when, because it was very, that uh, depigmented patches in the palms and hands. So slow repigmentation of dorsal fingers and two patches, and nil response at dorsal feet patch. That is, uh, that is resp uh, responding ankle finger patches and non-responding uh, that uh, stable patches. Here, periangle area so they started repigmentation. When you look into the, this picture, that uh, stable-looking patches didn't respond at all, but you can find that uh, that acral periangal areas got repigmented. So. Because we are giving immunosuppressions, maybe immune activation may be the sole reason for uh, that refractory depigment lesion in the acral area that is being cover that covered by the immunosuppressives. And those stable looking patches, maybe only melanocyte depletion is, is there, there is no uh, immune activity and it is not beneficial by adding immunosuppression. So, the question is that when, you, when a patient comes to you with acral vitiligo, the notion is that it won't repigment, you give only topical. But because it's a functional, because you, in any other autoimmune disease, we give auto, that, these things, these immunosuppressives. For SLE, other things, there is a long term data of uh, azathioprine in ulcerative colitis, inflammatory bowel disease. But in vitiligo, the function of melocyte is to give color, that define your race, your esteem. So this is also a functional deficit. We should not ignore the patient concern, but because at least you can give, it may, it may uh, that uh, depigment later, but at least you can give at least one, one and a half year, two year self-satisfaction to the patient. And I am just giving some insights so that you people are more into with legal research, so they may get some points. So as per renal transplant literature, because in vitiligo there is not that much study of long-term immunosuppression, but in, there is, uh, in renal transplant literature, just like a melanocyte target organ, here, here we, are, we know that the kidney is an allograft. So how this memory T cell act and how, whether well, graft failure take or not, uh, that happen or not, by long-term immunosuppression. So they use so much immunosuppressive agents and they found that there is some, uh, that even resident memory T cells or uh, that memory T cells in the blood is also decreasing by this, uh, uh, that global immunosuppression, not targeted one. And uh, there are so much studies that discussing the potential strategy of targeting memory T cells in order to minimize allograft rejection. So I've already uh, uh, discussed that studies on long-term immunosuppression really was limited. 
In clinical practice, clinicians use long-term that uh, immunosuppressy with favorable outcome on long run. And regarding the safety, azathioprine is well tolerated and has therapeutic benefits lasting long, as long as four years. Adverse effects such as pancreatitis, hepatitis, cytopenias, and gastrointestinal symptoms do occur, but are controlled by drug withdrawal only. The literature from that uh, that gastroenterology journals. So, in those that literature, they are saying that when the favorable outcome is there, there is no point in stopping the drug. You can continue. So there is literature supporting this. With legal patients is also humans, and acidic quality patients are also humans. So uh, the same mechanism will happen to anyone. So in renal transplant, recent evidence however has shown fundamental difference in the recall response to pathogens and allograft of memory T cells that may offer a therapeutic window in which detrimental graft specific recall response can be attenuated while beneficial pathogen derived responses remain unaffected because memory T cells are important in pathogen th that uh, derived responses but here that is, its mechanism is different. So a uh, research question is, uh, can a favorable microenvironment yield repigmentation in the so-called refractory wet LIGO by it is, can be ad addressed only by assessing or studying the long-term immunosuppressive effect by doing st the studies on a long run, not by six months control, limited by time duration. And responding acryl vitiligo with long-term immunosuppression while non-responding stable looking patches. In vitiligo surgery, we know that acryl patients won't work. So the problem is not with the melanocyte stem cell or any attachment problem. Because in the, as I've shown you that acrylpitiligo patient uh, res responded with immunosuppression without any intervention, and no stable looking uh, non acryl patients didn't respond. So Im maybe immunity may be working here. So conclusion is it's a chronic immune disorder with profound psychological impact. Autoimmune disorders need a long term immune modulated treatment to prevent disease progression and persistence. Utilizing similar management strategy may yield favorable outcome in vitiligo, especially the prototypic autoimmune acryl vitiligo. That's all, thank you. Any questions? Yes, please. I want to ask you about your experience about uh, the weak end therapy of uh, steroid and uh, the long term therapy of steroid. I usually use your protocol. I don't give the uh, weak end uh, uh, pulse therapy of steroid. What do you think about it? I know it's written in the in the most protocols, but actually with the experience with the vitiligo patients, I usually don't do it. I do um, the long term therapy as you do. What do you think about this? As rapidly spreading with LEGO, I use daily prednisolone, as you have suggested. That's 30 milligram to 10, 25 milligram, 20 milligram by weekly, weekly. And but I stop by two months. By the time I will start him already on azathioprine, and slowly spreading with LEGO, and the patient is more concerned about steroid side effect. I put him on oral mini pulse at a lower dose because I'm from Kerala. Those patients are more into Ayurvedic and they see medication rather than the uh, the chemical treatment by the modern medicine people. So I put oral mini pulse that is described in literature is five milligram two, two days a week, but I use 2.5 milligram. The PGA paper is 2.5 milligram dexamethasone on uh, Saturday and 2.5 milligram on Sunday. That's five milligram per week dose. So five tablets, four tablets, three tablets, two tablets. By four to five months, I stop. So in those, the facial one, because I just need a global immunosuppression and no, no, no need of a C, that profound immunosuppression, only give some favorable microenvironment kind of thing, slowly spreading one or two patches, not responding to topical treatment only. One can give or mini pulse because there is not that much cushing or habit tests and other side effects with oral mini pulse. But if the patient is having very rapidly spreading with Lego here, the melanocyte destruction is happening. The problem is with liver is that not unlike other thing, eczema other thing, just is this is stopped, the itching is stopped. But here we have to regain or re, uh, repigment th those areas also. So I will put him on uh, prednisolone daily dose, rapidly spreading cases. But uh, I saw in two cases, one you used the prednisolone and then used azathioprine. Uh, in the other case, you used the prednisolone for uh, two months and then uh, methotrexate for three months and then as a Why, How do you decide to use which protocol? Uh, 
thing is that that patient developed central because the patient I put him on uh, prednisolone and after two three weeks he gave a WhatsApp uh, message that uh, that some vision defect and I thought prednisolone I didn't find any vision defect so I disregarded and I told him to send me the ophthalmologist report. The moment I saw the diagnosis central uh, central serous retinopathy, I I said okay with the, with the drug. So and I'm starting on azathioprine if the patient develops any bone marrow suppression. So I started him on methotrexate, and the methotrexate the result was not good. I usually find less inferior result with methotrexate than with azathioprine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you for your lecture, and I highly appreciate your insight. And uh, treating early with the LIGO, whether acral, actually, this is like um, the concept that Dr. Asmuth was first initiating this concept that early with the LIGO is an emergency. But there's one point uh, that I noticed in the difference between the two acral cases that you presented. The first one, uh, the, the, the patches were quite small, and so the chances of repigmentation are much better by margin of repigmentation. While whenever we're having large patches of vitiligo in the acral areas, I think the chances of repigmentation are quite poor because we don't have hair, non-hairy areas, and the marginal repigmentation is unlikely to work. So I think this is another point that could contribute to the difference in the responses. And yeah, the thing is that even the non-acral stable patches didn't work because by that time, that may happen in the acral areas also. If we don't intervene early and that patch has spread a large area and there is no that much reserve, so there is these patches also become melanocyte depleted and there is no that melanocytes to repopulate even with an immunosuppression. So this is the early, you have to intervene early mm -hmm. in acral with labor. Yeah, sure. So I, I think like the size, again, the point that early treatment and the size of the lesion both can contribute to the yeah, outcome. That's what I'm saying. But the size also depends upon the chronicity. By the yeah, time sure. that, that uh, the yes. large patch become very large, that, uh, that memory, uh, that de the malnocid the memory has be developed, de yeah. de depleted. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Razmi, for nice talk and sharing your experience. Thank you. Now for the next topic, I would like to invite Dr. Vishal Thakur, Assistant Professor, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Bhavaneshwar, India. He will talk on transplantation of combination of dermal and epidermal cell suspension in vitiligo. Good evening, everyone. So. I'll be talking about the transplantation of combination of dermal and epidermal cell suspension in vitiligo. So uh, uh, this uh, most of the work which I'll be uh, showing here has been done in uh, PGI Chandigarh under Dr. Devendra Prasad. And uh, second, there were a few questions regarding uh, Dr. Sahil's uh, uh, talk uh, that NCS in stromal vascular fraction. So hopefully I'll be able to answer a few of those through my talk. So. This is the basis of normal human, uh, the skin pigmentation plus any surgery we do, uh, be it non-cultured epidermal cell suspension, mini punch grafting, or suction blister uh, epidermal grafting. But uh, before undergoing any, any procedure, we know that the disease stability is of paramount importance as uh, discussed before. And uh, usually the duration of clinical stability of more than one year is considered optimal. But why, why so? so uh, one of the reason is uh, in many previous uh, studies, it has been found that in in uh, a disease which is uh, less stable or uh, say less than one year of uh, stability, those patients have a higher perilegional CD8 T cell count, which uh, ultimately leads to the poorer repigmentation, uh, especially with the melanocyte transplantation. This has been seen in in many study, and uh, we can see here also in uh, through this uh, scatter diagram that. Uh, more the number of CD8 and um, T cells, less is the repigmentation. So this we did in our uh, few few of our patients also uh, the assessment of the CD8 T cells in perilegional area, and here also we can see that the uh, this mean fluorescence intensity in active vitiligo is much much higher than uh, those uh, patients with active vitiligo. So how to tackle this? So we need some strategies which can counter these CD8 uh, T cells. So if, if we go a few years back, uh, this mini punch crafting, this uh, was done uh, and uh, 
it had a very good repigmentation in vitiligo patches having stability even uh, less than one year few studies have quoted so what the reason may be may be uh, is because the mini punch crafts contain those uh, the dermal part and also some some of the uh, fat compartment also and even uh, this ncs has been uh, uh, like the adjuvant effect of prp also has been seen or uh, uh, in with ncs because prp also has many growth factors and it has a immune system modulatory effect uh, and presence of uh, this extracellular matrix proteins and it may stimulate stem cell reservoir also so in in past few years uh, the focus has shifted uh, from the melanocytes to non melanocytic components may be it keratinocytes uh, dermal compartment or even the fat also so this uh, this uh, figure here shows that uh, in the dermis there, there are the, these fibroblasts which secrete many many uh, growth factors and uh, there are also these ecm and and uh, endothelial cells also and adipocytes which uh, but most of the research is focused on the patho mechanisms uh, not in uh, uh, not there are not many studies in uh, like a therapeutic manner so uh, this also uh, doxyl also talked so in in this uh, study uh, the authors found that these uh, molecules uh, secreted by adipose tissue they ameliorate the capability to counteract oxidative stress and also uh, they promote this gsk3 beta inactivation and uh, the activation of uh, wnt beta catenin pathway and uh, there was this another study which in which the uh, the authors again they found that higher the cd8 t cell count lesser is the uh, repigmentation and uh, this in this in vitro study when they co cultured dermal mesenchymal stem cells uh, with uh, cd8 t cells they found that these dermal mesenchymal stem cells induced apoptosis and they also inhibited the proliferation of uh, cd8 t cells and uh, this is this is uh, another study in which uh, the cd90 positive uh, cells have been found to induce the t regulatory cells as we know that these uh, regulatory t cells uh, are less in cases of uh, uh, vitiligo so this to summarize that these uh, dermal mesenchymal uh, cells shifts the uh, milieu from pro inflammatory towards the anti inflammatory side so then we started doing this uh, non cultured dermal uh, cell suspension uh, in around 2016 we started this and uh, this subsequently we published in uh, uh, one of the journal so uh, but uh, we did the combination of non cultured dermal and epidermal cell suspension in a disease which is uh, less stable uh, and for this study purpose it was 3 to 6 months and uh, as uh, dr munish uh, also pointed that it was more of the stability uh, and we eventually uh, found that uh, this this method uh, can be done in patients who had or uh, less less stable disease so the suspension was made from the uh, skin uh, punch biopsy and uh, the epidermal part was removed and dermal part was incubated in collagenase and uh, after incubation uh, overnight incubation it, that was centrifuge uh, and uh, this uh, dermal cell suspension was made then we did uh, characterize the dermal mesenchymal cells in our uh, this dermal cell suspension and uh, this is a flow cytometric analysis of that showing that around uh, 22% of the cells were cd90 positive but cd90 is uh, also fibroblasts can also have this cd90 so we did few other markers like cd44105 and cd19 is a negative uh, control so around 10% of the cells uh, were positive for these markers so the transplantation was done one is to one ratio with uh, this uh, non cultured epidermal cell suspension and uh, so this this is one of the patient who had uh, this bilaterally symmetrical uh, generalized vitiligo over uh, uh, both shins so you can see on the right leg the combination was done and uh, the the re repigmentation was around uh, more more than 90% while where only ncs was done so repigmentation not uh, was not very Uh, encouraging so this is another patient of uh, generalized vitiligo uh, in whom the combination uh, we did and uh, here also a very good repigmentation after 6 months 
and then we did uh, this combination in some uh, stable segmental vitiligo also who had a stability of more than uh, 12 months and uh, we found that there was better repigmentation but it it was not statistically significant this is one patient in whom we did this uh, transplantation in two settings so uh, you can see there is uh, almost 100% repigmentation uh, with excellent color match So uh, this d the dermal cell suspension, the dermal mesenchymal cells or other dermal components which uh, we could not uh, characterize what this dermal uh, cell suspension contains apart from this uh, dermal mesenchymal cells may have inhibited the activity of these cells and which may have led to the better acceptance of transplantation and while uh, with alone NCS those uh, uh, the unabated activity of CD8 T cells may have destroyed and this has been seen in the previous studies also. But uh, since uh, it, we had, uh, for this study, we did it in uh, around 40 patients, but uh, we have continued uh, and we are still doing this. We were doing uh, this dermal cell suspension in patients who come to us and want uh, like early surgery, you cannot wait for around one year. So we have got very good results. So one thing is the long-term stability of the achieved repigmentation so this this is one of our patient uh, on whom like we did a surgery in uh, I think 2016. So this is a picture after four months. Uh, there was some hello, and uh, this is a recent uh, picture of few, uh, just few days back. So the hello has become more prominent, but you can see the pigment has been uh, retained very well. And uh, another thing is uh, to further explore the, this dermal cell suspension, what else it contains. I think that is an area of uh, this further research. So just to conclude, I'll say our journey started from these uh, tissue grafts and we have moved to cellular grafts and now to the stem cells also and these extra cellular vesico uh, ves uh, vesicles or even the exosomes and but uh, still uh, the, uh, there is a long way to go ahead. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vishal Daku, for the new journey in Vitligo. And uh, I would any questions from the audience, please? I'm, I'm not able to hear. For sorry, excellent presentation. Uh, my question is. When you take skin from thigh, or which which area you you are opting for uh, uh, harvest? Generally, for NCS we do it from the uh, thigh, lateral thigh, okay. and for uh, uh, the dermal uh, this uh, dermis uh, part we take grafts from the thigh only, from the donor okay. area. Okay. Now the question is like uh, when you take um, for this, do you take? Deeper uh, section or deeper no, We are taking tissue? punch, skin punch, yes, four okay. millimeter punch. Okay. Okay. So, how many punches for uh, in general you take? Oh, depending on the size, we generally take around three to four punch. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vikas Shal Thakur.